Now, coming up, bout number six, let's take a look at this one, Danny. Now, this should be a big one, shouldn't it? Now, it's undefeated Australian lightweight champion George Ferocious Cambosis Jr. taking on decorated Filipino Rodney Raffle. Now, Sydney-based George Cambosis Jr. He has an impressive amateur pedigree with 100 amateur bouts to his name. He will be looking to continue his unblemished six and nil professional career with a big win in front of this, his home crowd tonight. What are you predicting in this one? Oh, look, uh, Rodney Raffle is a really experienced guy from the Philippines. He's had a lot of experience. He's, he lost the fight to someone who was extremely well credentialed and he lost a close decision. So this kid's had a lot more experience um, as far as a professional fighter goes than George. But George is a sharp young kid. He's, you know, he's, he looks the part. He's a good little fighter. He's, he's strong. He's compact. He throws really good combinations. He's a skillful guy and you know, he's got the hometown crowd. He's, he's going to want to impress him. It's a, you know, it's, a big, it's a big stage. It's a big occasion for the young kid. I'm just really you know, looking forward to watching him fight and I wish him well and I think the crowd are going to get to experience a, a very skillful fighter tonight. Well, I'll tell you what, the crowd is getting very pumped up and we'll be able to see this fight right on the other side of this break. I'm George Ferocious Cambosis Jr. If you watch the way I fought, you know why they call me ferocious. I'm 21, I'm young, you're gonna see something very new. You're gonna love it. I'm Rodney Rapol. I'm Rodney Nafal. I'm 28 years old. I've been professionally boxing for the last seven years. Rodney's very tough, experienced, he's been around. He's never seen what I bring to the table. I'm gonna outbox him, I'm gonna pick him apart. I believe that I can beat him. It's gonna be inside fight. I'll put a lot of pressure on him so I can knock him out. If the knockout comes, we're definitely going to look for a big KA. Yeah, I've been called cocky and brash, but I'll back it up. And tonight you're going to see what? I will win, and you will see tonight something very different. You're going to see something very ferocious. And welcome back to All Fans Arena as we get towards the business end of the night. Sonny Bill, one fight away before that, a lightweight bait about between George Kambosis and Rodney Rafool from uh, the Philippines. Let's have a look, Jeff Fennick, at the tape. 21-year-old with an impeccable record, six from six, and a very, very distinguished amateur record as well. Definitely so. He's a very cocky kid, but um, he's a guy that and doesn't just talk, but he, um, he walks the walk as well. He trains really hard. I've heard a lot about the boy. I've watched him. I'm very impressed with him. And the other uh, gentleman, uh, Rafool from the Philippines, good record as well, 19 fights, 12 wins. Here's Mark Warren, centre ring. The footy show fight night continues with another feature bout of the evening. Ladies and gentlemen, a lightweight contest and scheduled for six three-minute rounds. Would you please make welcome out of the red corner, ferocious George Cambosis Jr. Into the ring he comes. Brash, cocky, confident, but if you're 21 and you had 100 amateur fights and you won 85 of them and you've won three of your six professional fights by knockout and won the other three on points, I suppose you're entitled to be cocky. And uh, he's destined for greater things, this boy, but this will be a test for him, Jeff Benny. Yeah, definitely so. This uh, Filipino knows how to fight these guys. He says he's going to put the pressure on. And that's the way, if you're going to beat George, you've got to, you've got to hit him close, and you've got to try to tire him out, and you've got to hurt him in close. But um, George has you know, fought all these kind of fighters before. He's uh, going to have a great night on, on, on a big show tonight. Mark Warren, in the meantime, centre ring. Please make welcome our opponent out of the blue corner from the land of one of the great superstars, the Filipino Manny Pacquiao, the same country. Give it up for Rodney Rafool. <laughs> So 
into the ring comes the Filipino, Rodney Rafool. 19 fights, 12 wins, 5 losses. 6 and 4 in his last 10. Been fighting for the last seven years, as you heard. And back we go to Mark Warren for those introductions before we get to the main support bout. First up and out of the red corner at 21 years of age, presenting himself at 61.8 kilograms, standing 173.58 in the old scale, and fighting out of Kostya Zoo Boxing Academy, trained by Igor Goliabev. His professional reads this way and imposing six fights with six wins, with three coming by way of KO. He is the current Australian lightweight champion from Dragons Territory, Rockdale, New South Wales, Ferocious George Cabosas Jr. And so we move into the blue corner at 28 years of age. He tipped the scales at 60.7 kilograms, standing 170 centimetres in height, 5'7". Trained by Ernie Gonzalez, Jr. the corner. His record, 19 professional fights, 12 wins, 5 KOs, 5 losses with 2 draws from Lipa City, Bantangas, the Philippines. Presenting Rodney Raful, the deadly one. When the bell goes for round number one, the man in charge, Mr. Mick Hapey, and fighters to centre ring. I've never seen a Filip Filipino fighter who's not tough. Well, this guy looks like he's out ready for the fight, Ray. He looks conditioned well, his body looks great, and I think, yeah, he's here to fight. I've worked for six rounds. I've been clean contest, I've made my instructions at all times. And I say stop and break once you do exactly that. No, hit punch it back of the head and the kidney area. Touch gloves and all the best. Plenty of the Australian Greek community would be supporting young George, a very proud Greek Australian, George Cambosis Jr., the ferocious one. I was going to say, Kenny Rogers lost a bit of weight, that referee. <laughs> we better get a shot of Mick Hafey, I think. You've got to know when to hold him, Jeff. You've got to know when to fold him. You've got to know when to walk away, know when to run. There'll be no running in this fight. OK, here they come. Rafool, the Filipino. And this is a big test for this promising Australian lightweight, Georgie Cambosis. That's a great word. Promising is this kid's got all the potential, he's got all the ability to, to take that next level. And he's got to acquit himself against fighters of this stature with good records. And obviously, as you can see from his condition, has trained hard. Left hand comes from the Filipino. Tagged by Cambosis then with a left himself. So as opposed to the brawling type fights we've seen a bit earlier, these are two men with a healthy respect for each other who just want to test each other out in the opening minute or two. Definitely so. They start off with a jab like most great fighters do. They try to get their distance, try to get their range. And you have a look what your other, your other opponent's got or your opponent has got and both boys are doing that at the moment. I'm interested to hear when we get towards the end of the fight uh, an analysis of this young man, the 21 year old from Rockdale, from Jeff Fennick, because the raps are big. And counter punch from the Philippine. Oh, beautiful right hand from Cambosis. And with followed with a lovely left hook as well, Ray. It was a two punch combo there. But it didn't rattle up the Filipino. He held his composure. He's an accomplished fighter. Left-hand lead, double up. And Bosa's got away from a left-hand lead from Rafool. And the good thing, Ray, was he didn't get carried away. He hit him with two big punches and didn't just jump in there and go crazy. He went straight back to the jab. And Good, good thing for this boy. Oh, nice body shot there by the Filipino. developing into a very, very good bout. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, left, right, left. Beautiful stuff. And 
inside the final 28 seconds of round one. Good sized crowd at Hawthorne's Arena going out on the oh. GEM network across Step Australia back, and internationally to New Zealand. Some great sponsors paid away, Jim Bean. Yellow Rick Road, Mark Boros, always supporting him. his friends. Great man. Good man, and uh, he's here tonight. Was interviewed earlier by Bale. So there's that bell sounding for the end of round number one. We'll talk about it shortly. Just heard the corner for George Cambosis Jr. saying, well, that's the first round. You've got the job done. Yeah, it was certainly a good first round. Both both guys uh, show they've got a good jab. And both guys show they're both good thinkers. But um, definitely the first round goes to Cambosis. So it's a six-rounder, the first okay. of the six-rounders. Six three-minute rounds. Out they come for the second. Footy show fight night. All phones are in, are in Sydney. Swinging right hand from the Filipino. Ooh, a couple of good punts of exchange there. Great hands played there by Cambosis. This Filipino thinks he's going to walk up and walk through him now. But, yeah. Cambosis showed some great hands played. He punched right. about three times after he called him a break, right, mate. You're great, okay? Box. That's why he got the warning. You know, you can tell uh, uh, why the raps are there on this young bloke, Jeff. Those combinations, the hallmark of a, a good fighter despite a fairly, although you've won your world title after seven professional fights, so he's had six. One step back, boys. But you can see Let's that go. he's an accomplished fighter. You can see that he's been a very good amateur. Definitely so, Ray. He's got all the punches. But he's facing a very tough opponent, Rafool from the Philippines. One was on the shoulder from Rafool. Cambosis backed away out of it. Left hand lead. And the Filipino's stalking him back to the neutral corner and throws body punches, and they're pretty good punches as well. But he counters with a straight left. Cambosis, center ring. Cambosis threw a beautiful right uppercut here, but because his back foot's behind his front foot, Ray didn't land. He's going to get that foot a little bit wider if he's going to throw the uppercut, come off the back foot. Lightning-like left-hand lead. The jab just flows from his shoulder. And close they go. He grabs hold, Cambosis, and throws a punch as the referee said no, break. break. There'll be no okay. corning, warning there because it was as he said it. Okay, you've got a wide shot on screen there. Talk us about this footwork in relation to the uppercut. Yeah, what I'm trying to say, Ray, is his back foot's behind his front foot, where he needs to be a little bit more width so he can get that coming through with it. And as you'll see, his feet are, are very, very wide apart. I'd like to see him a little bit closer, and I'd like to see that back toe up. Uh, it's just That's where you get that power from, where, where, where your feet uh, transfer your power. And in fact, well, there's a beautiful uppercut with his feet in the, in the right position there because he was on the ropes, right? Good wide shot from our camera crew here at All Phones to illustrate what... The world champion is talking about Jeff Fennick. 22 seconds ago, round two, scheduled six rounder. Oh, he tagged in there. Rafool got in with a left hand and followed up with a body punch, which may have been absorbed by the elbow. Now, Filipinos growing with confidence, Ray. It's a much better round. Oh, good combination from the Australian. Back in the red corner, there's that bell. Sounding for the end of round number two, and we'll hear from Jeff shortly. Yeah. Always be aware of what he's got. Watch, yeah. watch, always be aware. Pretty level, Jeff Fennick, after that second round. Uh, he was finishing perhaps the stronger refool, but Cambosis is still fairly composed. Definitely so, he's confident. The kids are very, very confident here, but if you watch his replay, over here, right, the just missed. Cambosis lands, but Ray's throwing punches with his feet just, just a little bit too far back. Look at that beautiful right hand. That, that right hand should hurt you. If his feet were in the right position and he used his hips there, he would he would knock this guy down. Well, just got to get that back foot up and around. I'm almost compelled to watch the feet after Jeff points it out to me. That's why he's here in co-commentary, so that we get a better understanding of 
why things don't happen. Wait, look, every time he steps, oh, oh big right hand by the Filipino. Counted by a little short, sharp jab. Oh, another, oh, another big another right, right hand. hand, left and right hand from Rafi, 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 just have a look. Every time Cambosha steps, his first foot is forward, and his back foot goes behind his front foot, which is making him walk under the right hand all the time. He's stepping into the right hand all the time. But don't be surprised, the Filipinos are going to throw a lot more right hands now. He's picked that up. He just fell and just wiped the gloves and back up he comes from the canvas. So two minutes to go, round three. And a couple of counter punches there from the Australian. Step back. Oh. He's back, one of the tattoo I just noticed. Tattoo said, don't retreat, never surrender, or words to that effect. Ooh, sharp left hand there, but counteracted by the fool. Back, boys, back, back. We'll step back. Much better round for the okay. Filipino. He's not winning it, but he's uh, certainly in some good punches. See that right hand, Ray, it came from around the circle because it couldn't come straight because his feet, his feet weren't in, in, in a good position at all. Step back. That right hand should be coming straight down the barrel. He took a punch from the fool on the glove and then returned with a couple of short, sharp ones. And there's a right, there's a left. Over the top, caught him with a left on the way back around. A straight left again and showing great composure for a 21-year-old when he lands some scoring punches. He takes his guard again and goes after the Filipino. Oh, nice uppercut. And he caught him on the on the forehead too as he was moving back. Cambosis, good name, ferocious George Cambosis, Jr. And this has been a much better last 35 seconds for him, the Australian. Funny how ebbs and flows boxing. You just when you think the other bloke might be starting to assert himself, things change, and there's the bell sounding for the end of that round, and Cambosis acknowledges it's a much better round for him as he returns to that red corner. Okay, put that pressure on him. Yeah. We're hearing some interesting comments from the corner. Jeff had returned to commentary. Uh, the last thing the young fella said to his corner was, he's got no idea, this bloke. He's got no idea. I think he might have some idea. Yeah, definitely so. I've never like, uh, really heard a fighter talk as much. And I, uh, you usually sit there and you listen, right? You know, you, 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 you absorb and you go out and try to do it. Very cocky young kid. We'll put it down to the youth, 21. Yeah, you're exactly right. Most of the fights I've seen at a good level, uh, the cornerman does all the talking, the trainer talks, and the bike shuts up. I want to check what's in his water. <laughs> Just a joke. Anyway, back we come. Lightweight it is. Back of the head. What's at the back 61. of the head? At 61.23 kgs. Back. Step back. Go. We're in round four, and... I think it'd be fair to say, Jeff Fennig, it's pretty even. Um, if one bloke took one round 10-9, the other bloke took the other 10-9, so not much in it. Yeah, I think Kim Bosch has just been able to finish rounds better. Like, that last round was, was very, very even. In the last 35 seconds, Kim Bosch has maybe landed 10 punches, so he won the round for sure. Yeah, and he, he went back to the red corner full of confidence. He, he was raising his arm knowing he had a much better latter part of the round. Definitely so, and it's that last impression that um, those judges are feeling. Yes. They're human like everyone else, and they're about to put a score down, and they're most impressed by what they saw in the last 30, not the first 30. Definitely so. Come on, boys, work inside. Oh, there's a good punch by Cam Basis as the Filipino backed away. and Step back. Break. He tries to wrestle Step with him. Break. Okay, break. McAfee says break. I'll have to tell him when I see him later that Jeff thinks he's tearing Australia as Kenny Rogers. No dolly here. Break. Let's go. Break. 
Both those punches from Cambos has taken on the gloves of Rafool. Again, right, they just fall a little short because his back leg's going behind his front leg. He's not in a position to throw those punches and, and land them. And your feet, your feet take it away to your punch. Instructions coming from the blue corner, obviously barked in Filipino. Oh, there's a couple of good punches thrown by the young Australian. And again, we're in the last minute of the round. He starts to come really over the top of the Filipino. Well, that one thing that, that does say, Ray, is a supremely fit young guy. He trains really hard because he's able to finish every round very, very strong. He just got a glancing right hand as he led with the left and came over the top. And there's a scoring punch, and there's another one. There's an uppercut. Two heads. A couple of straight lefts. One scored, one didn't. Round arm punch. And the fool. Keeps coming forward. Counter punching now. Inside the final 10 seconds or so. Over the top. And oh, there's a combination of punches thrown at the Filipino. And again, as Jeff pointed out in the previous round, he finishes the better. The Australian. Oh, he tagged him on the bell, but it really wasn't after the bell. So we come back with an examination of what happened. Plenty big, big targets too. Don't throw punches. Not as much talking from uh, George this time between uh, rounds. The round's not over yet. We'll give him a chance. <laughs> you think he might wind up for the last 10 seconds? Uh, he's fine. Yeah, he's very confident. Um, look, he's fit, and that's a, a great thing to see. But uh, like I said, um, he got hit with a big punch right at the end of the round. Mm. Yeah, as the bell went. It wasn't after the bell, certainly as the bell went from the Filipino, Rodney Rafua. So, referee Mick Hayes, he says, come on, boys. Footy show fight night. Round five of six, the main preliminary to the big one. With Sonny Bill Williams not too far away. And work inside, boys. Jeff has the Australian here in front. But the next two rounds, he needs to keep on that bike and keep working. Well, Ray, and the great thing is they haven't brought him a tomato can. Yet. They've brought him somebody who can honestly fight him. He will learn so much from this experience. It's a really, really important thing to say. It's a bloke who's had 19 fights and 12 wins. He can fight. And he's presented a challenge for this young man who's won six from six. Oh, there's a beautiful left hand. Nice counter left hook there. Took it well in the end, the Filipino. He was sort of off balance as he was hit, but held his ground. Two minutes remaining, round five. Very confident now, Cam Bass, as he delivers a right hand after the left hand lead goes with the left right combination would you see that right here that just missed right because he didn't step with it he just he just threw from the same position got to realize the guy in front of him is going to move and a lot of these guys are that are training these guys are, are catching the, the punch with the pads instead of teaching these guys to move to their opponent oh, the filipino landed one of his own then definitely a big overhead right Step back, boys. Let's go. Kimbo just might have a little cut over the left eye there, right? Spot on, just well spotted as well. It's just a trickle of blood, but he won't be helped with that flurry of punches that were directed at him, and he returned his own. Now work in there, boys. Back the heads. No, break. Step back. Let's go. It's okay. It hasn't opened up really. It's just a little trickle at the moment. One round and about 40 seconds to negotiate. Ken <laughs> Basis with a left that missed and a right that missed, and the Filipino takes guard. But there's a couple of scoring punches there. It's been a great round for Cambosis. We'll have a look at that. Uh, they'll work on that eye 
between the fifth and sixth. Left eye, as Jeff pointed out, has been opened up. Ooh. Moved away, and he comes after him, but the bell sounds for the end of round number five here at All Phones Arena. And the catch man for Georgie Cambosis is working on that eye. In the meantime, we're seconds away, in fact, minutes away, I should say more correctly, from Sonny Bill Williams. There he is, Jeff. Yeah, what a great man, what a great human, and we're just so impressed with him. He's a guy who doesn't scout, that just goes and does his job. Um, that's, that's what I like about Sonny the most. He's not one of these guys out there screaming and shouting that he's the greatest fighter in the world. He's just a very humble guy, and I, you know, I love watching him. Anything he does, I, I like to be associated with. Well, everyone that knows him well, as you do, tells me the same thing. He's an absolute and thorough gentleman in every sense of the word. And I noticed he's off social media, off Instagram and Facebook after the birth of his child. Says it's something he doesn't want to be involved with anymore. What a great listener, to people, that he wants to spend time with his children. What a, what a, what a great human. Anyway, in the final round we are. Um, I'd say without putting words in Jeff Fennick's mouth, he's got Cambosas in front. I definitely have, but I know this Filipino is going to go leather. He's going to go for hell this round. He will not stop. This will be a ferocious round. And we've got two and a half minutes of it to go. They meet in centre ring. They've both given it their all. And the Filipino is still throwing punches, so the referee doesn't separate as Cambosas is throwing punches to the body and leaning in. He'll definitely get in there and break them up now. Look, for me, this is great. I mean, Cambosas doesn't need to, to throw too many punches. He doesn't want to get hit this round. And then, look, if, if he knows to hold, he should be holding a bit more and, and just slowing the fight down because he is in front. Smart tactics, in other words. You know you're in front. You don't want to get knocked out in the last round and lose a fight. Definitely so, Ray. That one was on the shoulder from Rafool. And so, again, as Jeff Come pointed on, we'll out, he knows Come he's on. got a points lead, and so he protects that with 1.50 to go and get, backs him onto the ropes and makes sure he's not far enough away to get tagged. And the corner man, the cut man, has done a good job on the eye. The blood's gone. Oh, that's a beautiful, beautiful cut. cut. Straight left from the fool. Plenty of ink on the young bloke from Sydney, from Rockdale. Oh, there's a nice punch. And then he had a flurry, but the Filipino said, I'm out of here and backed away from them. He's going to win the fight. There's a, a minute 12 to go. And this has been a quality fight against a quality opponent. Yeah, it's been the best fight by far. We've had some great action here tonight, but this is two guys you can obviously fight and put on a great show. And I'm sure the people at home, the people who are watching, are really enjoying this, because this is what boxing's about. So, Cambasis, the raps were big coming into it, and they'll be just as big coming out of it, because this bloke is an accomplished fighter from the Philippines. Definitely so. He may have lost seven fights, but the seven guys who have beaten this guy obviously can fight, because he's tough. Come on, work it, Last 30 seconds we are, Jeff Fennig, and they back up against our commentary position right in front of us here, ringside. Mick Hafey breaks them all. He went in and ran to a punch. The Filipino got one. He doesn't need to trade punches here, Cambosis. He's got it won, but he can't help himself. The adrenaline takes over in the final 20 seconds. He knows he's hurt him. He throws a left and a right. This cements a victory. He comes out for the Filipino, the Australian. And the eighth guy, and the eighth guy that's going to really can fight also, George Cambosis. Great performance. Well said. Well said. And there's an uppercut from Georgie. Oh, he knows he's won. <laughs> when you are a good fighter, there has to be a little hint of arrogance. Sometimes it can be tempered, other times it can't, but it's there. He knows he's won, and in the last 30 seconds, he knew how long. He just knows what to do and when to do it. And you were talking earlier in the round, hanging on. Make sure he protected that points lead. Yeah, definitely. The start of the round, he knew that was, the guy was going to come out dangerous towards the end. He said, I'm going to finish and show the people what I've got. And he did that. Let's take our viewers at home through the replay, Jeff. Oh, there's that beautiful uppercut. It was a nice jab first, jab lead, and a beautiful uppercut. And you'll see him, he'll do it again. If you hit him with it once, hit him again with it. And that's what George has done. That's, that, to me, that's a great trade. He's a good quality. You hit him with it, there he goes. Another uppercut. Throwing a punch and you land in it, continue to throw it. Well done, George Cambosis. Very, very good to see. 
So the ringside judges have put their score sheets together and the officials from the Combat Sports Authority of New South Wales are about to pass them to Mark Warren ringside and it will confirm that George Cambosis, ferocious George Cambosis Jr., has won. The margin will be interesting for the three ringside judges. I'll just be interested it'll, by it'll, that. It'll be 60-54 or 60-55, but I think he won just about every round. There, yeah. may, there may have been one even, I'd say, Ray. But uh, no, he, he put up a great performance. Again, the guy that he fought had some ability and could fight. Here's Mark Warren. Fight fans, we go to the cards, we travel. Les Fears scores the fight 60-54. Dexter Dunworth scores the fight 59-55. Kevin Hogan scores the fight 16.54. The winner on all three cards by way of unanimous decision, ferocious George Cambosis Jr. That's the worth of having Jeff Fennick ringside. <laughs> Just before they handed them up, it's like he's got George, George, BSP. Here's Bo. Great win, mate. Clinical. Uh, in and out. You look like you did that pretty easy. Yeah, done it pretty easy. First of all, um, I want to thank a few people first. That's the most important thing. I want to thank Nick Politis for getting behind me, David Gingell, uh, the footy show Fly Night, uh, Sonny Bill, my corner, my team, all my sponsors, my family. My sponsors were backing me all the way from the start. Uh, I want to thank everybody that came here and enjoyed that performance. You've been a lot more ferocious. All right, well, it's great to have you here. I want to thank all the people that supported you, and we uh, look forward to having you here next year for the footy show Fly Night, mate. So, uh, congratulations. Definitely. I want to be here again, and I, I will be here again. I'll be fighting the best. We want the best opponents out there. Whoever want it, they can get it. Doesn't bother me. Well, there he is, George Frocious Cambos. Back to you, Aaron. Yeah, thanks, Bo. Great stuff there from the young Sydney fighter. Now the countdown is on SBWV Welliver. You are watching the Footy Show Fight Night live on Gem. Welcome back to the first ever footy show fight night and what a night it's been so far. And Danny, before we take a look at the last fight highlights, it is my great pleasure to welcome to the panel, Paul Gallen. Gal, you, you look pretty fresh. How are you feeling after that? Oh, I feel good. You know, it's, it's always good to get a win. Um, you know, I knew he was going to be a very tough guy. He's got some experience and um, you now he's a bit awkward, but as I said, really happy to get the win. He's a very experienced MMA fighter. Did you notice that in his style? Was he different to anyone you fought before? Oh, yeah, look, I knew that, as I said, I knew he's got combat experience now, and he had an amateur boxing career as well, so I had to work to get inside him, and when I did, he, you know, he managed to, to tie me up you know, very well, so it sort of stopped my attack a little bit, but as I said, he was a very tough guy, and he was a good fighter. I'm glad everyone enjoyed it and it was entertaining. Fair bit of feeling in that as well. There was a bit of talk prior to the fight. Yeah, there was a little bit, but, um, you know, that's, I suppose, part of the fight game and, um, you know, something that we both just had to deal with. But, you know, I was very confident going into it. You know, it would have been nice to stop him, but as I said, he's a really tough guy. He's a winnie boy. That's uh, right, sort of the area I'm from. So, uh, all in all, it's a good fight. Well, congratulations to you now, three from three in the ring, which is a phenomenal effort. And good luck for this NRL season. Thank, Thank you so much for being much. part of this night. Now let's look back at the pain away highlights of the Cambosis v Raful fight. Danny, they're saying technically this is the best fight of the night so far. Oh, without doubt, you know George Cambosis uh, is a you know is a real tiger, and he and he showed his uh, his class out there. He's a very very skillful young kid. He's had a massive amateur experience, and he showed his class. It was really nice punching, beautiful right uppercuts. And you know the other guy, Rafael, was was no walkover. He's a very experienced guy, and George only had six fights. We're now seven, and he took it you know to George the whole fight, but. George was too quick, too sharp, had the harder punches, and like I said, he's a real tiger with a big future, this kid. Yeah, what, what do you see in the future for him? I mean, how far can he go in this sport, do you think? It, it's up to him. He's got a lot of skill. He's a determined, tough little tiger, and, and you know, it just depends on, on how much he wants it. It's, the sport of boxing is about desire, like any sport, you know, and, and look no further than the, than the gal over there, the, the Blues skipper. You know, if you've got the desire, you can achieve anything. And, and I think young George Cambosis has got the skills, he's got the, uh, the tools, and I, I'm pretty sure he's got the desire. So it was a really nice fight to watch. Yeah, cannot wait to see him develop. Now let's